In this video, I will be detailing the technical elements of the Steadicam, analyzing the various contexts which led to its development and success, as well as evaluating the impact the Steadicam has had on screen storytelling since its invention. What is the Steadicam? The Steadicam is a stabilization rig which allows for a camera to maintain a level head and have smooth movement as if the camera were floating in space. The Steadicam has three main components the sled, the isoelastic arm, and the supportive vest. The sled has a post, or pole, which supports a stage, also called a sleigh, where the camera is mounted and it also supports two different mounts, one for a monitor and the other for batteries. A gimbal is attached to the sled at its center of gravity and is then attached to the arm. Some posts can telescope, allowing for higher angles while others are reversible meaning the camera can be on the bottom of the rig and the monitor and battery counterweights are on the top, as shown in this behind-the-scenes shot of Garrett Brown on the set of The Shining. The arm has two parallelogram-shaped arm segments connected by a pivoting hinge. Each arm segment contains a spring system carefully calibrated to counteract the weight of the sled, keeping the rig level. The arm attaches to the gimbal and the supportive vest. The supportive vest, as the name implies, supports the arm, which supports the sled. This allows for the Steadicam operator to focus on their camera work since the rig's weight is supported by their body. The camera is isolated from the operator's body, which enables the smooth movement of the rig. Why was the Steadicam made? Garrett Brown came up with the idea for the Steadicam in 1973. At first called the Brown Stabilizer, it was of a more rustic build than the Steadicams we see today. Not only was he tired of the laborious process of using a dolly and setting up tracks, he also wondered, How can you let somebody run and walk, run upstairs, and the shot is smooth? And for somebody with my, you know, very basic education, that was a, a perfect challenge, because it's Newtonian physics, right? The Steadicam was his proposed solution. He went through three renditions, beginning with this, which couldn't tilt and keep the camera level. Three months later, he moved on to this, which included a supportive vest, fiber optic viewfinder, because there were no monitors in those days, and was very heavy, 70 pounds or 31.75 kilograms to be exact. It also could not pan effectively. Eventually, he ended with this, which closely resembles the Steadicam we have today. It included the isoelastic arm required for achieving smooth movement. Soon afterwards, the Steadicam underwent further developments to become the device we have today. Recently, handheld Steadicams have been created without the need for a supportive vest. Once Brown finished building the third rig in 1974, he set out with his new device and recorded footage he called Impossible Shots. The shots he demonstrated in this brief reel had never been possible to achieve before. The reel was revolutionary and arrived at the right time in America's film industry history. American cinema of the 70s was in the thick of the Hollywood Renaissance era, which gave birth to the blockbuster and a new filmic language with the likes of Martin Scorsese, Steven Spielberg, Brian De Palma, George Lucas, Francis Ford Coppola, William Friedkin, John Cassavetes, and others at the helm of works such as Taxi Driver Jaws, Carrie, Star Wars, The Godfather, The Exorcist, and A Woman Under the Influence. The Steadicam was a new tool in the arsenal of these ambitious filmmakers. Many of them were happy to utilize and experiment with the Steadicam on their films. The first director to employ the use of Brown's invention was Hal Ashby in 1976 for the musical biopic Bound for Glory. It is a simple and effective shot where the camera follows the main character through a crowd as he explores a new area. In the same year, Rocky and Marathon Man contained Steadicam shots. One of Brown's impossible shots, which involved a woman running up and down the stairs in front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art, inspired the iconic shot of Sylvester Stallone running up those same stairs in Rocky. Since these early days, not only has the Steadicam been used extensively for cinema, it has been used often in music videos and sports casts. One-take music videos are quite popular, such as Justin Timberlake's Say Something and Middle Kid's Questions. Perhaps La La Land's opening had something to do with this trend. Sports such as the NFL and cricket use the Steadicam to achieve a more cinematic look while simultaneously bringing the audience directly into the action. 
The study cam combines the stability of dolly shots with handheld mobility, making it one of, if not the most, versatile camera rig. It can shoot low angles, high angles, Dutch angles, push in, push out, dolly zoom, tilt down, tilt up, pan left, pan right, whip pan, circle around the subject, or track a subject, even navigating through tight spaces, crowds, and across varied terrain, up and down, all the while maintaining its level-headedness. It also has the capacity to shoot for extended periods. A prime example of an extended take, using a Steadicam, is Russian Ark, which was filmed entirely in a single 96-minute take on a Steadicam. Steadicams are most famously used for tracking shots and extended atmospheric takes, but can be used in any circumstance and across all genres, whether they be action, comedy, or drama. Anything. Steadicam shots function as all other shots. They generate mood, establish milieu, set tone for a scene, enforce theme, and so on. Despite the Steadicam and its operator having become staple assets of film productions, acclaimed directors such as David Fincher and Wes Anderson prefer not to use them for personal reasons. I don't allow Steadicam within six miles of me because I just hate the aesthetic of it. The Steadicam is a stylistic choice and when used appropriately can produce magnificent results. The most famous Steadicam shots are typically lengthy and immersive. The Copacabana shot in Goodfellas has been praised by numerous filmmakers for not only the technical proficiency on display, but the storytelling power of the scene. The big steady cam shot that enters the Copacabana was used to justify the way Lorraine Bracco's character felt as she was being introduced to this world and taken on this journey with this character. She was experiencing this for the first time, and you as an audience member were experiencing it too. It's really that character's entire lifestyle. It's going through the back door and winding up on top. That's the true kind of melding of theme and story and plot and character. It's the brilliant combination of all those things. And you see it seamlessly executed in that shot. The Steadicam is an inherently cinematic tool which has enabled one-take films like Birdman or The Unexpected Virtue of Ignorance and 1917 to achieve seamless hidden cuts and a visual polish. Many acclaimed filmmakers such as Spielberg, Scorsese, De Palma, Quentin Tarantino, Paul Thomas Anderson, Alejandro Gonzalez Iñárritu, and Gaspar Noé have commonly used the Steadicam across their filmography. However, the Steadicam does face scrutiny at times. The primary concern is overindulgence. When referring to the beach scene at Dunkirk in Atonement, its Steadicam operator Peter Robertson explains, The Atonement shot does divide opinions. It's kind of gone down in the, the annals of Steadicam history as one of the great achievements uh, of, of Steadicam, but there are a lot of people who don't actually like it and find it quite indulgent. It's a sort of a trophy shot. Fincher also debates this. I completely love that it exists, and, and when it's the perfect tool, it is the perfect tool. But he goes on to explain numerous reasons why he deems the traditional approach to cinematography is superior. The main issue people have with the Steadicam is when it is not the appropriate tool or shot choice for a scene. Rodrigo Gutierrez, an experienced camera operator who worked on Detective Pikachu in Spider-Man Far From Home says, I mean the best camera works the one that you don't see, is it? Because you're concentrating on the story. Mm. If you're too aware of, of what the camera is doing, then it didn't work, did it? I agree with this idea. The Steadicam, when used properly, can be a brilliant cinematic storytelling tool. It should not detract, outdo, or take the audience out of the film itself, but add to the story by advancing the plot, establishing theme, characters, setting. It should serve the story, not itself. Two of my favorite Steadicam shots achieve this. The train station escalator chase scene in Carlito's Way is a masterful Steadicam shot, as well as this nail-biting scene in The Revenant. The Steadicam is a powerful cinematic tool that, when used well, produces brilliant cinematography. I believe it has had a positive impact on films, allowing for creativity to thrive and making shots more interesting. What do you think? Has the Steadicam benefited cinema? Or has it degraded it? <laughs>